The last two weeks have been miserable weather-wise. It's been cold, wet, dreary. At one point, we didn't see the sun for almost a week. Not ideal for grass growing. When I scalped my backyard, it was 70 degrees. Now we're living in the 40s. I was really hoping the grass would be a lot further along than this. But that's okay. Better weather is on the horizon. And we're going to get right back on track. I can feel it. Hey guys, it's Jesse with Lawn Life, and today we're gonna to talk about the cheapest way to fertilize your lawn. Also, we're gonna talk about the update on my backyard. For those of you that are new, I decided to take my Kentucky bluegrass backyard and maintain the height of cut at one inch this year. So a couple of weeks ago, I went in and scalped it down to a half of an inch, dethatched, scalped it again, and now it's currently recovering. Well, in the last two weeks, the weather has been complete crap. It's been in the 40s, been cloudy wet just not good weather for growing grass but now we have some good weather on the way so I think it's a great time to get out there and give it some fertilizer and really push that top growth so it can start filling in dense like my front grass did you definitely don't want to push top growth too much in the spring but with my backyard I really want it to fill in so I'm gonna give it a little boost and hopefully with this weather coming it's gonna fill in nice and dense and get ready for summer now here's my backyard after we scalped two weeks ago and then this is what it looks like today. And, and from eye level, it actually looks pretty good. Now, once you start walking on top of it or you look down from the house, down, out from the window, it looks pretty thin. There are definitely a lot of areas that need to fill in more dense. And it will get there, especially with this weather coming up. But what I think the plan is going forward is going to be to spoon feed this thing weekly or every two weeks, just to give it a little boost and hopefully help it fill in a little more dense. Now a couple people asked me about these dog spots and honestly I don't think I'm going to do anything with them. I'm just going to let them be. I mean I, I don't have enough time to train the dog to go into one spot and he needs somewhere to go to the bathroom so it just is what it is. And honestly it really doesn't even bug me anymore. Um, it's a really an eyesore for if you were to look at the grass it's probably the first thing you notice but for me I don't even notice it anymore so it doesn't even bug me so I'm just going to let it go. Basically, whatever you let annoy you in your grass is what's going to annoy you. If you just don't care anymore, or it basically doesn't bother you, it's not gonna bug you. So it's basically on you, the little things in your grass that are gonna really irritate you the most. Like this patch of clover over here, this needs to go, it irritates me. So that really bugs me and I'm gonna get it out of there. It's just a personal preference thing. Like the dog spots don't bother me. Now, if the dog was to pee on my front yard, that bugs me. I don't like when he pees in the front yard. I instantly go over with a hose and spray it off. So, so basically pick your poison. If you, if there's something in your yard that you just don't want it to bug you, just try erasing it from your mind and not let it bug you. Like these pee spots, they're not gonna bug me the rest of the year. Now, as you can see right here in this strip, this is where I brought my grass low last year. And then this is a test plot over here next to it with four different varieties of bluegrass in it. And a lot of weeds that I need to get rid of. So the rest of the yard is gonna end up looking like this strip. It just needs some time and I'm hoping the nitrogen helps it fill in, especially with this weather coming. So that's the plan going forward is to really get this thing nice and dense and just keep cutting it at one inch. The fertilizer we're gonna to use today is urea. And urea is by far the cheapest fertilizer you can buy for fertilizing your lawn. For one 50 pound bag, it costs me $30 and I think I even overspent. Usually you can get a bag of urea for $15 to $20. There's just not too many places that I can buy it close to me. So I bite the bullet and pay the $30 for the 50 pound bag. Now within that 50 pound bag of urea, there is 23 pounds of nitrogen. Now let's compare that to Milorganite. 
I know how much you guys hate doing math, so I'm just, I did the math already for us. So within one 32 pound bag of Milorganite, which is going for $18 a bag right now at Home Depot, there is 1.92 pounds of nitrogen in that bag. If you're comparing each bag, there is 11 and a half times more nitrogen in one bag of urea compared to the Milorganite. Now you're not gonna get the iron, you're not gonna get the phosphorus that you get in Milorganite. You're also not gonna get that slow release capability that Milorganite has. Now there are some pros when it comes to urea on the opposite spectrum of that. Urea is a fast release fertilizer. So that, as soon as that thing goes on, it's working. So you're getting that fertilizer working right away. So you're gonna get results faster. Now the con to that is you're gonna have to work harder to put that nitrogen down with urea. When it comes to urea, you don't, usually don't wanna put it in a spreader and spread it like you normally would with malorganite because the urea is so strong. It's very, very hard to get even coverage with the big granules and how strong each granule is. If you do do that, it's gonna be very hard to get the even coverage. You have a chance to burn your yard. And also, if you do get it out evenly, it's still gonna look polka dotted because when the granules go out, each one of those granules is hitting a spot in your grass and that's where the nitrogen is hitting. So getting that nice even coverage is really tough. Last year I did it with a hand spreader and I did it weekly in small amounts. And at first you could kind of get that polka dotted look in your grass, but after a week or two it disappeared because if you just keep doing it over and over, eventually it just spreads out and you start getting that even coverage over time. So what I like to do is dissolve the urea in water and then do a foliar application with my backpack sprayer. Foliar means basically I'm spraying the leaves of the grass and those leaves are sucking in the nitrogen instead of from the root system. The con that comes with this is you'll have three separate applications with your backpack sprayer compared to one with granular form. And basically that's what you're gonna be paying the price for with the urea. Yes, it's cheaper, but you're probably gonna be doing more work. The nice thing about spraying foliar applications is that you can do this all the way through summer and it's not gonna affect your grass. I know a lot of people are scared to fertilize their grass in the middle of summer because of how much stress it's already under and you don't wanna push that top growth. With foliar applications, you don't really have to worry with that about that as much because you're giving it so little at a time that it's just giving it enough to, to keep that color, keep the growth and really not stress it out at all. All right guys, I'm gonna walk you through how to turn your urea into a liquid form um, and dissolve it. So first thing is my water pH is right around nine. So we wanna lower that pH so the plant can actually uptake what we're putting on it way easier. Um, I have some citric acid here and a little bit of this stuff goes a really long way. So I'm gonna put in 0.1 ounces per thousand square feet. So my backyard is 4,000 square feet. So I'm gonna put in 0.4 ounces into my water and then check my pH and see if we're close to where we want it. We want it to be around five, five and a half. Last year I put in too much on a couple of my doses where my pH was like 1.5 or something crazy. And I still put in my iron and my uh, urea and there was no ill effects on the yard and it worked just fine. So if you go a little under, that's fine. Nothing bad's gonna happen. I've done it before. But I'm gonna try getting it around five, five and a half, but it's really hard because this stuff goes, a little bit of it goes so far. So I'm gonna put in 0.4 ounces, hopefully. There's 0.4. I put it in here. In my drill, battery is dead, so I'm gonna do this manually. And using warm water helps everything dissolve way easier. So if you can put warm water in it, if not, it'll still work with cold water, but warm water works better. pH. And we're right about four. So even 0.1 per thousand uh, is a little too much. 
but four of will work. I'm closer to five at least. So the next step is to figure out how much urea you're going to need to cover the square footage of your yard. So I want to put in 0.2 pounds of your urea per 1,000 square feet. So how you do that is you're going to take 0.2, divide that by the percentage of nitrogen that's in urea. So there's 46% nitrogen. So you divide 0.2 divided by 0.46, and that's going to give you 0.44 or 0.43 pounds per thousand. So I have 4,000 square feet, so I'm going to times that times four, and it says 1.739. So I'm just going to round up to 1.75 pounds of urea I'm going to need to put on 0.2 pounds of nitrogen per thousand. It sounds very confusing, but it's very simple. Um, so I'm going to need 1.75 pounds of urea to cover what I need to. There it is, that's one and three quarters pound. Then you dump her in. And give it a good stir. So there's a lot of impurities in the urea, so there's a lot of like little chunks of stuff that are floating around. You're gonna wanna make sure you have a filter on your backpack sprayer or a way to filter this out because otherwise it's gonna clog up your sprayer. All right, now we're good to go and we're ready to spray. Now, before you go out and spray your yard, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate your sprayer. And there are plenty of videos on YouTube to show you how to calibrate your sprayer. Basically what that means is you want to be able to spray exactly how much liquid you have on the square footage of your yard. Because if you get to the end and you have way too much, then you didn't put down the correct amount that you wanted to in the first place. Or if you get to halfway through and all of it's gone, you put on way more than you wanted to. So you need to calibrate your sprayer so you know exactly how much you're putting down. Now as far as spraying goes, it's really simple. You just walk in a straight line and you want basically your strips of liquid to touch the tips of each other. So you wanna keep spraying back and forth and you just wanna walk your yard until all of the liquid is gone, hopefully once you get to the end. So by far, urea is the cheapest option when it comes to fertilizer, but it is a little more work. If you guys have any questions about foliar applications or urea fertilizer in general, just leave your question below and I'll be sure to answer to it. If you guys can subscribe and hit those notifications, I'd really appreciate it. I really wanna grow this channel for you guys and bring you as much content as possible. Otherwise, I'll see you next time on Lawn Life.